Hey guys, this is Aaron. I want to take a look at an extension data. It's a little maybe off the beaten path for a lot of people, but it does something so cool and in such a cool way that I felt like I had to show it. Uh, we had a qu couple questions that's come up on a, one of our live Q&A sessions about creating movable joints. The question was actually in context of rigging a uh, like a character. This isn't a full rigging solution, but it is a way to put movable joints into a SketchUp file. So I want to take a look. Let's hop in. All right, so the extension we're looking at is called Movable Joints. It's available on the extension warehouse from DBS. It is a paid extension, but it's only $5. You can download it and run it for seven days for free and kind of get the feel of how it works. And if this is, I mean, if nothing else, just for the fun of how this works, it's probably worth $5. But if you're doing any kind of uh, joints or you want to make a model that is editable through with, with uh, editable joints, it's going to be well worth that $5. So let's take a look at how this works. All right, so I have right here uh, this little robot I created, and we're going to take a look at how we can move him with these joints. So I've set up half of his body half of his upper body with some joints, and we're just gonna take a look at how this works. When you install movable joints, you get a toolbar of four buttons. We're gonna run through what each of these four buttons does. So the first one is this little hand icon. This actually says move the joint. So if I click right here, and I come over to say his jaw, and I hover over it and I click and drag, it's gonna open and close his jaw. See that? It goes a little bit crazy, it goes a little too far, um, but you can see how it, it's moving that jaw. Likewise, I have one here on his head, so I can hover over and click on his head, tilt it up and down, and then I can actually, if I, if I get to his neck right here, I can twist his neck back and forth as well. All right, so the next few buttons, the this one right here, I'm gonna skip over, I'm gonna go to this one, which is move joint to position zero. Every time you create a joint, it has a zero position, and clicking on it with this is gonna put it back to that zero, so it puts it back to where it was originally. A real nice way to revert back to what you have uh, as far as location. So let's talk about how to actually make a joint. Let's co come over here, let's look at this. So his, his left hand here, I want to make this so that it will you know, spin around this screw right here. So the first thing I need to do before I go in and tell it to make a joint is I need a line to use as that, that uh, hinge point. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the screw, I'm going to draw a line right across the middle, and then I'm going to make a line going straight up the blue axes. That's what I need to have. So I need that line right there. Once that's created, I can select a group. This group includes this uh, geometry for the hand, and then the screw, the nut and bolt are all part of this group. So I'll select those, and then I will click this bottom button, which is joint configuration. So that's going to pop up and say, okay, it's creating a new joint. It automatically names it. This is joint number eight. I can choose a type. This is going to be a hinge. Now select the joint axes, and that's going to be right here, this blue line. All right, then I'll hit close. That's all it takes. That's now it has a joint there. So if I hit the hand and I hover over this, I can actually rotate that back and forth. So you'll notice a couple things. One is, is this, a, this gets a little wiggly as I spin it around, it's, what it's doing is it's actually rotating it based on the hinge point I had, and it's referencing where my mouse is. So as I move along this ground plane, it's, it's kind of finding some, some odd spots. So if I zoom out like this, it's a little bit easier to rotate. So that's actually one of the things I found as I use this, is it is good to have reference geometry to use to rotate along. I'm gonna go ahead and set that back to zero, and we're gonna look at this checkbox right here, which is our control board. So in here, I have a list of all the joints I put in this model. And then I can, this is really cool because I can actually send, I can set the bounds, how far do I want that, that joint to be able to rotate. And then I can manually come in and adjust that rotation. So right here, this is joint number eight. This is the one we just created. That's this hand. See, I have a, a what is it currently at, the degrees right now, set that, set that angle as zero, and then I have a slider. The slider lets me actually spin that. So you can see right now I can spin a whole 360 degrees. Well, maybe I don't want to travel 360 degrees. Maybe the most I want to travel back is like, mm, maybe like 45 degrees back, something like that. So what I can do is I can say the max travel is gonna be 45. So that's gonna come all the way back here. 
And if I want to go forward, let well, me see it stops at zero, but I can go beyond it. I can actually say minus 45. Now I can use a slider to go this way or this way, that amount. See that? Nice and easy. The cool thing is I can come in here too and type. So if I want to go back to zero, I can just type zero, enter. So if I go back to the head, which we already looked at before, I was using the, the move joint command, but if I come in here and look at using control, um, I can go to the zero, which is my jaw, and you can see I have it set to go to 45 at the max and stop at zero. Joint one is the tilting the head. I can tilt down 45, back up 30. And then joint number two is going to allow me to switch to the left, swivel to the left or right 90 degrees. All right, so one of the things you might have noticed with the head is when I, like when I swiveled right here, not just that joint moved, but the head and the jaw came with it. Let's take a look at how that gets created. So if I come back to this arm, if I grab the forearm and say, I wanna, I wanna make this swivel too. So first I wanna do the same thing I did before. I need a, a line to rotate a, around. So I'm gonna go create a line right in the middle of that screw, just like I did on the other one. And since I'm here, I'm gonna create two more lines. I'm gonna create one in the middle of this screw, which is where this joint will rotate. Oops, wrong line, right there. And then, whoops, uh, one more line. This, this joint right here, I actually want to rotate around the center of this circle, so I'll just draw a line right there. All right, now, I'm gonna run through here fairly quickly to show this last bit. So if I say, okay, I wanna take this joint and I wanna rotate it, I wanna put a hinge on it, I'm gonna hit the button. This is another hinge. My joint axis is right here, and additional groups are going to include the hand. Save that. Close. So now, when I come in here and rotate this, see, the hand comes with. And then I can separately grab that hand, I'm zoom out a little bit so I can rotate well, and then grab that hand separately and rotate it. I'm going to go ahead and use revert to zero real quick. Put those back where they were. Zero, zero. And continue up the arm. I'll just finish this arm off real quick. Here's another hinge. My axis is this line right here. Additional groups are gonna include the forearm and the hand. Save that, close. And then we'll do one more. We'll do the shoulder right here, this uh, pivot. One more. This is gonna be another hinge. Select the joint axes. I'll use that line right there. And then additional groups are gonna be all of the arm. Save that, close. Now, as I come in here and grab this piece right here, and I can roll it over. I grab this piece right here, bend that arm down. Grab this piece right here, roll that hand back up. And then grab this piece right here. Roll it down, and you can see, pretty easy. And again, these lines, these lines that I use, it remembers where those, those points are to rotate, so I don't have to worry about those. I could actually probably put those on a separate layer and turn them off so I didn't see them. But the important part is, man, that's just, it's super easy to set this up and so much easier than going through piece by piece and using rotate to move these pieces around. It's actually, kind of fun once you get all this set up. It does take a little bit of time, but it's time well worth it if you're gonna spend any amount of time posing a character or device inside of SketchUp. So if you watch the video on the warehouse, he actually has a truck that he goes in, I'm sorry, he, the developer goes in and rotates the tires on, uh, opens the doors. He also uses the slider joint to move the seats back and the window up and down. Very cool extension, worth checking out. And like I said, this is an answer to a question that we actually had on a couple different videos. If you like that, please go ahead and click like down below and then we'll know that you liked it. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. We create a couple videos, live streams around here, a few a week, and uh, you'll be notified of them if you subscribe. Most importantly though, please leave a comment. Like I said, this video came from a comment that we had on a live stream. So we like making these videos a lot, but we like them even more when they're showing something you want to see. Thank you.